Thank you for watching my previous tutorial on how to begin to make your image look pixelated. I'm going to continue with this video and show you ways to make your image look even more pixelated. The first thing I'm going to do is open up my previous image that I was working on in the video beforehand. I'm going to go to where I saved that image last, which is My Documents. And I'm going to go ahead and right click on the file that I was working with. So right click, Open With, and I'm going to go ahead and click on Adobe Photoshop Elements. If it doesn't show up in this menu when I do the Open With, I can go to Choose Program, click on Adobe Photoshop Elements, and click OK. Remember, ignore Profile if that window shows up. Do not register. Close. Don't ask again. All right, I have my pixelated image from the video tutorial that I did before. I'm not going to need the grid, so I'm going to hide it. I'm going to go to View, and just go to the grid and click on it. That way, there's no check next to the grid. The next thing I'm going to do is try to grab the minimal amount of colors from this image, so I could start using it for the Paint Bucket tool. The way I'm going to do that is I want to see my color swatches so I can save it into that library. So I'm going to go to Window at the top here, Color Swatches, and you'll notice a nice array of colors. Now I'm looking at the image and I can see three dominant colors in this image. And I'm going to want to save that to my color swatches. We're going to have to be minimalists here and take the least amount of colors as possible so that way we can be successful when we take this to Legos or Post-it Notes on the wall. The first thing I'm going to do in capturing the color is I'm going to make sure I'm on the eyedropper tool. The shortcut for the eyedropper tool is I. So I am going to hit I on the keyboard. I hit the letter I on the keyboard and it changes to the color dropper tool. I am going to go ahead and select the first color. And we'll just go with this blue right here. And you'll notice the blue goes in your foreground color. This is good. You're on your way of to saving your colors in your color swatch library. So now that it's in the foreground color, I'm going to go ahead and click on my color swatches, and you'll notice this page that looks like it's flipping. You could create a, a new color swatch by going ahead and clicking on that page that is flipping. You'll notice the blue now is in your color swatch library. Then I'm going to go ahead in the eyedropper tool and click on the white, and the white goes to your foreground color. I'm going to go ahead again and create a new color swatch. There's the white next to the blue in my newly created colors in the color swatch library. Nice, keep up the good work. Oh, good idea. Let's capture the last color in this Major League Baseball logo, red. I'm going to want a red that's representative of this area. This orange doesn't look right. So I'm going to go ahead and go here, because this is a nice solid red. And I'm going to go ahead and add that color. Taking a look at this color, I can see a kind of theme going on here. Red, white, and blue. Red, white, and blue. Oh, those are the colors on the American flag. This is the Major League Baseball logo. American flag, patriotic, Major League Baseball, America's game. Oh, that's right. I don't think that's a coincidence. Okay, anyway, we've got our colors, our basic colors for this logo. I'm going to want to use the Paint Bucket tool to make this even more pixelated. I'm going to go ahead and go to the Paint Bucket tool. The shortcut is K, so I'm going to hit K on my keyboard, and you'll notice I'm in the Paint Bucket tool. Now I'm going to want to start with the blue, because that's covering the most area. So I'm going to click on the blue color in, in my swatch library, and make sure it's in your foreground color. We have to be consistent, so stay with this blue when you are using the Paint Bucket tool for the blue areas. Now that's important to recognize the tolerance here. The tolerance will allow you to cover more area or less area. The higher the tolerance, the more it's going to capture. The lower the tolerance, the less it's going to capture. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure I'm at 100% to capture the most amount of blue. Now that I'm in the blue color swatch, I'm just going to go ahead and left click in the blue area and you'll notice that the blue is all now this one blue hue. I don't have any tints or shades. I'm going to go ahead and click on the inside here where there's blue as well. And you'll notice 
it is that same blue as the one on the outer edge. I'm going to do the same for the white. And I'm going to go ahead and click on the white and click in the white area. I'm also going to click in this baseball right here and make sure that the pixels are defined better. Finally, I'm going to go with the red and I'm going to click in this area here and here. And you'll notice the pixels are more defined with their edges. All right, this concludes the tutorial on saving colors in your color swatch library and using the paint bucket tool. Continue with my other tutorial, which will be coming up on the creating a pixel brush. Thank you for watching.